the Kaduna State Government in Nigeria says it will commence the transition to a four-day working week from today, December 1st. The move, which will permit public servants to work from home for one day per week, is a measure designed to help, according to the Kaduna State Government, boost productivity, improve work-life balance, and enable workers to have more time for their families, for rest, and maybe even agriculture. So how practical is that from an SME perspective? We have Uchenna Okezie, who is the Managing Director at Recruitment and Management Consulting Firm at Your Service Limited. Uche, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Rotis. Thank uh, you for having fantastic me. Fantastic stuff. So from, um, I guess, from, from SME, you know, business, private sector perspective, how practical is this four-day work week? I think it is very practical. So we have to look at it first from the historical standpoint. You know, uh, the five-day work week we have today has not always been the case. It wasn't until 1926 when Ford Motor Company decided to experiment a five-day work week in order to give their employees more time, more time off, that we saw it for the first time. And about 15 years later, it became national law in the U.S. And since then, we've seen, we've seen it grow, and people have adopted five-day work week. So what the Cardinal State Government is doing now, I think, is um, commendable. Because the four-day work week allows the employees, allows staff, allows people, workers to have more time to spend with their families, to attend to doctors' appointments, to uh, travel, to do other things that they're interested in, personal development and the sort. And I think it is practical and it will help to boost productivity. Okay, that's productivity. What about? Uh, I think they mentioned work-life balance. Um, you know. <laughs> well, work-life balance uh, ties into productivity in a very, um, in a very. Uh, strong correlation. Mm. So it, when you have, when, when the workers have more time to spend with their families, they are happier, and then they want to do more for the organization. So uh, productivity is boosted when people are relaxed, and also when people um, want are happy and want to do uh, more work. We've already seen in some countries like uh, Norway, in Germany, in Denmark, in the Netherlands, where there there is uh, workers work less hours. We're already seeing a correlation between that and an increase in productivity. Whereas in countries like Japan, where country, uh, workers are relatively overworked, we're also seeing them um, re reduced in, in productivity, according to the Global Productivity Index. There was that news a while back of the guy in Japan who died at his desk. He, they thought he was sleeping. Put his <laughs> it's incredible stuff. Um, but for, for as far as work-life balance is concerned, is that still here in Nigeria? I know you've mentioned Norway, Germany, Japan, other countries. But is that a, is that a goal for most of the, I mean, from your consultant perspective, with the businesses you, you consult with, is that something that's a reality for, for them? It is, actually. So, thankfully, the, most of my clients are smart employees. And I think that you know, for smart employees, it's something that they, they make a, a goal for their businesses to increase the wealth, improve the welfare of their workers, to increase work-life balance. Because you know that when, I mean, it, 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 it pays the employer to mind the welfare of their employees because it increases staff retention. Nobody wants to be losing staff. You don't mm -hmm. want to lose good talent. Uh, the cost of recruiting new talent is, is very high, about four times the cost of retaining your good talent, and nobody wants to lose that. And you also want your organization to be one of the best places to work, so that whenever you put out the job ads, you have you know, numerous candidates, numerous good candidates who are interested to work with you. Mm. And it generally, it makes you a happier employer as well, when you know that your employees are happy, and they're happy with you, and you know, they're happy to work for you. All right. Now, are there any, are there, as far as back on the productivity side, are there any other ways in which, um, in your view, productivity can be improved as far as what we see here in, in Nigeria? Well, generally, there are, uh, organizations employ productivity tools. There are these um, tools that you know, organizations can employ. And I think that, that, that has helped. And also, it's important to uh, sensitize people on the need to continue to work, even though they are working from home. Because what you find in Nigeria, especially, is that most people, when they're asked to work from home, they assume that it, it is a holiday. Yeah. So I don't think the Cardinal State government has declared a holiday on Fridays. I think what they've said, okay, workers can work from home on Friday. So you're not expected to be going to the markets or the sorts. You're expected to actually put in the work, but just from a different location. Mm. I'm glad you mentioned working from home because the Kaduna State government said that lessons from COVID-19 are what essentially got them here, particularly um, working from home as well as virtual workspaces and so on. So is that, is that where we are now? The, I'm tired of using this phrase, but it's the new normal. <laughs> Yeah, it's everybody's <laughs> using it. So is that is that where we are? Well, I think COVID really revealed to most people that you don't have to be at the office to get things done. So, but where the challenge is is with management and then with sincerity on the part of the workers, because you also find a lot of people who, like I mentioned earlier, 
don't work when they're at home. They, they just do something else or they, um, they deliver less, you know, less value than they, they, they could. Mm. So you see a lot of people who are taking more than one full-time job at a time simply because they can and they have the flexibility to do so. Now that work from home is the norm. So it, it seems that most organizations are moving towards that. But it's still, uh, it's still quite new to see the government and public institutions uh, leaning more towards working from home. So it will be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of years. Speaking of which, do you think that with Kaduna taking the lead on this, do you think that this can be, is it scalable? Can, it, you know, can other states pick it up, private sector and so on? A private sector has picked it up and yeah. so far you know, it, it's been good. My own company, Active Service, we've been working from home since March last year and mm. I, I can tell you that productivity has increased since then. I think that it is something that other states um, should learn from the Cardinal State Government. Lagos, for instance, where uh, a lot of people are stuck in traffic day in, day out, and we would really like a break. You, you see the, the reaction of workers whenever there is a holiday, whenever a long weekend. Nobody, yeah. nobody wants to get back to work. I don't think that's the way work should be. I think people should look forward to going to work rather right? than disdain it and despise it. So I think allowing people more time to spend with their families and allowing people more time to do the things that they really want to do would make them happier and it would generally lead to higher productivity, a happier uh, society and, and, and all, all everything good. Great stuff. I want to switch gears to part of what you do, headhunting and talent scouting. It's December, first day of December, the year is practically over. Yeah. What's that been like in 2021 as far as? Well, 2021 has been great. So we're seeing a lot more good candidates in the market. So partly because people are now beginning to realize that they can get more for their time. Mm. So it, we're seeing more people in the market and that's, that's good for us. We're also seeing that um, organizations want to hire you know, people who are experienced rather than interns and all of that. So that's also making us have to do more headhunting rather than just general recruitment. So mm. it's been a good year for us so far. Okay, our, our um, resumes, CVs, are those still as relevant today as they were before when it comes to you know, reviewing the type of talents that companies want to hire? Well, CVs have never been exhaustive when it comes to communicating who the individual is. And that's why at your service, what we do differently from everyone else is that for our clients, we share not only the CVs, but we also share a video of the candidates you know, interacting with us and the candidates also introducing himself. So okay. that's what I was, exactly. So, so we find our clients like that. They like to see a video. They want to meet the person because... Uh, today, we see a lot of people who outsource CV preparations to uh, professionals and to graphic designers. Uh -huh. So often you see a CV and you're like, hey, nah, this looks good. And then when you get to meet the person, you're like, hey, are you sure that's you? Or are you the, are you the same person that's been described in that CV? So it, because of that, you know, employers want to meet the person first. Yeah. But you can't meet 100 people at the same time. So currently, we're building a platform at yourservicejobs.com where we're going to allow candidates to upload a video of themselves. That way, employers who are registered with us can assess these videos and get to meet the candidate even before they meet the candidate. I think that's, that's something that adds more value to the recruitment process. Yeah, so, so CVs aren't as relevant as they they are as before then. They, they're not, they're they, not, yeah. They still are because the flip side to that is that employers also want someone who is willing to, I mean, you, it's better to find a candidate who has uh, gone out of his way to get a good CV than to find someone who was too lazy and didn't even do any good job okay. on the CV. So I think CV still give you an idea of how serious a person is. Or but how they need to be enhanced. Person. But it needs to be enhanced because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't reveal everything about the, about the individual. Very quickly, how did COVID affect what staffing? Um, oh, COVID hit us you know, really, really badly because there are lots of layoffs. You know, because companies were making less money. Well, again, it depends on the industry. So right. COVID affected different industries differently. Some industries are really, really happy with COVID, while some are suffering as a result of it. So, but generally for recruitment, COVID was, wasn't good for the recruitment industry globally because people were losing jobs. And we only benefit when people are getting jobs. So we mm. want more jobs. And I think also with regards to interns and um, lower experienced um, individuals, I think that's also a, a very bad thing. So we're seeing less and less uh, recruitment of fresh graduates and interns. And I think that's uh, largely due to COVID. Mm. And also the job market as well. Very quickly, a minute to go uh, for December. Are they, is it who's recruiting this for this festive period? Is it retail shops, caterers? How what what's what's it looking like? Well, mostly artisans, you know, are being recruited to you know do some finishing renovation work and, and construction work is going on this Christmas as well. 
And but what we're seeing more is where recruitment operations are happening now as against next year. So companies are hiring now, interviewing now, but those staff are going to resume work in January in or year. February. So that's what we're seeing more of right now. So Uchana uh, okay, uh, managing director at your service limited, thank you for joining us to talk thank about you, very much, uh, you know the whole four-day work week, see how practical that is.